All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back again with another episode of Marlem Go Podcast. I'm Fentu. This is Daniel. Mm-hmm. This is Achu. And this is Sicho. Achu, Sicho. Yes. Achu, Sicho. Okay, don't get it <laughs> twisted. Last week, guys, the comment session was very positive last week. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like it. We, we want the cooking. We, so we like bring all, the, yes. bring all the ingredients. The Feel free, cook. Yeah. But some people thought that we were discriminating. We didn't read your messages. Uh, don't worry, guys. Listen, one thing is for sure. We appreciate all of you. So keep liking, keep posting, keep commenting, keep sharing, keep subscribing to the, ch- uh, to the channel. Betway Ghana. Share it with your friends. And I've seen a lot of comments saying that this is the best football podcast on the African continent. We appreciate that. Yeah, whatever you guys say, I that's, believe That's you. some heavy compliment to Charlie. Ah, we Charlie. appreciate that. Brother. We appreciate no, that. Brother. Serious. Lots of really good ones. Even uh, there are comments about the comments from last week. Yeah. <laughs> um, in fact, let's see some of them. Uh, someone, somebody says, Cove Town Babe. Cove Town, oh, I baby. found this comment. Cove Town, Town Baby. Babe. Shout Cove out to Town you. Town Baby Girl. girl. Yes. Afraid your flower. She ah. says that I think it is safe to say I'm the only female here who at least consistently Yay. watches the show. My comments must always be read. Yeah. And I must say, oh, no, we facts. agree. Okay, <laughs> facts. So I just want to say that maybe there are other ladies who it's are not maybe watching. There are. We see the are, matrix, who the are, female. Who are watching, who just don't but comment. they don't comment. So, yeah. baby girls, Drop your comments. Quick. Also That's have a right. Of you. Thank yeah. you. Thank no, you very much. To Cove Town yeah, Cove Town yeah. Babe. Yeah. Cove Town Babe. Quick. Uh, there's a comment here from Inketia uh, Echo, mm-hmm. who Echo says, Inketia. this podcast has all the ingredients I want. Yeah. And he says we should add a certain Nitan Kwao. We are working on that. We'll bring him. 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 You put me on the chopping board, but <laughs> I still love the podcast anyways. No, so we love you right back, man. We love Josh, you right back. You so- cool down for Danny K. So- cool down for Danny K. <laughs> if it's not be you, where you the fire? <laughs> <laughs> if you, uh, anyway. if you cook, at some point, you must be cooked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 There are some other suggestions. Derek JD says, great podcast. I think you should use same color as the chairs as the one Danny and Coach are sitting on. Please consider that. Okay. Suggestions. Okay. Oh, we should use the gray one. Yeah. More of the gray. Okay. 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 That's a, but yeah. this is gray. This is blue. This is black. So we're yeah. trying to mix up the color. So, you know, um, but interesting suggestions. So why not? We'll consider your feedback is great. It's Massive. enormous. We appreciate Massive, it. Yeah. That's what we are humble enough to admit that this podcast, they were not perfect, right? Oh, so yes. we're taking the feedback. We're yeah. improving very, as very we go. Important. But it's also To be resource. honest, I don't want us to be perfect. I want no, to nobody is perfect. Have all the... No, yeah. it's impossible. All the what ifs. If they are cooking you, mm-hmm. it means they are yeah. not... Yeah. 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 It's also an yeah. issue of resources, right? Yeah, that If be. people were big, watching and subscribing plenty, like, as you talk on our next week, bah. go buy the chair. <laughs> all right now, so we... So we... Basically, the message is simple. As you enjoy it, you share the link quick. You subscribe that. and then put the notification bell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a message here. Uh, Achu, they said you like speaking off mic, so please mm-hmm. hold your microphone. Uh, that's a comment from Ty, Alfred Ofus. Bring some plaster. Listen, Let's tie the plaster to the uh, <laughs> Alfred Ofus, you says, this is the, my first time coming across this podcast. Great podcast, seniors. Yeah. I'm here to stay. Stay with us, yeah. man. Stay with us, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for fantastic comment. Um, I had, in fact, I had a great comment regarding the handball rule from last week. Somebody asked a very, very checkmate question. Okay, that's the question I'm looking for. Um, it was a fantastic question that had me thinking a lot. So I'm just gonna. I don't find remember the it. question. Yeah. Or you want the person's no, name? No, no, no. I want to read the question, the person's okay. name and then the question. By the way, I found it. But before that, somebody else followed up. Julius Jabba followed up to something that someone said last week about Achuta Makuru. 
Mm. And the way he likes to say in the comment, the, like the way he does his. I saw that. I saw that. Right. I saw that. Is comment. It, it, it was it, a very it, lovely I'm question. Reading it. It's a one plus one. So to. there is an allegation <laughs> here, or a concern by viewers, that Achutamaklo takes a bit too much time to make his point. In other words, he knows what he wants to say. But the guy but will go and talk pretty big English and go around before it. he becomes to the point that he wants to say. It's not like he doesn't know what he, he knows. You you can we can all tell what he wants to say. But he will but go the curves through, you the curves, the curves, you go through, you go through. The curve is like the train curve yes, that he went to hit the air. He'll go to Bume, he'll go to Atlanta, see, go to uh, before see, he arrives here. My response to him is that you're assuming your comprehension capacity is the same as everyone. It is not. <laughs> Wait. Oh, it is not. When you say comprehension capacity, yeah, like how, you else, to understand how, else, how else could you have simplified that? He's your understanding. That's your your understanding of... That's it, though. Your understanding. That's so broad. That's that's right. You don't even need to add off anything. Yeah, your understanding, your understanding of what he's saying is... That's it. Not everyone will understand it at the rate you do. Please. Someone people, needs a few more words. Okay. Someone so like needs, this, like this. comments for me. Julian Jabba says... When it comes to Ajitama clue, mm-hmm. when they say question, one plus, plus one, one, any other person will say two. two. <laughs> Achu will say if A, a is equal to one, one and B is, is equal to one, one then A, a plus, plus B is equal, equal to B plus, plus a, a because addition is commutative. <laughs> Therefore, one plus one, one is equal to two. It's two hundred. It's two hundred. The guy just wanted to show off. The guy just wanted to show off. But the guy, the guy, the guy wanted to show off. Julius, you know you how are, many people who, remember this commutative edition? But I see, um, I'm sure he's like you. Yes. So he understands so he where yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he he understands where I come from. Yeah. He's guilty of the same crime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a great comment. Charlie, read it the handball. Read the handball thing. Yeah. So here's the handball checkmate uh, point that I wanted. This is from Sam. Oh. Mm. Sam. Um, or Sam. Um. Okay. He says, so, if Gabriel, now it's talking about the handball incident from our last episode. If you missed it, you can go back and watch the last episode. We debated the whole handball situation involving Gabriel in the first leg of the Arsenal versus Bayern Munich match and whether it should have been giving a penalty. The referee didn't give it. And then we came here and we said the referee used common sense approach. Okay, because... Some of you said, not all of us. Okay, cool. <laughs> so Sam says, so if Gabriel... Instead of picking up the ball like he did in the yeah. game, pass the ball back to Raya and it ended in the net. The goal, would they have been disallowed based on common sense? Very great question. Checkmate. Because if he can't pick the ball and you're thinking it's because by many players are not approaching him and not. not and we say we won't give the penalty because, because there's no the advantage for them. There's no advantage for them. And if he had passed it to the pass the ball back to the goalkeeper, having there's no pre- the same circumstances the same, exist, right? The same no advantage to buy, no the pressure, said, nothing. Restart that goal kick. I mean, the whole common sense thing makes no sense to me. But there is also there has to be a limit to it. I it's just said uh, he just has a question. Would the goal have been disallowed based on the great same goal. common sense? Rule? That's a great goal. The, the great goal, goal for buying. The goal will not be disallowed. That's what I, and I think I agree with with yeah, there it's, has it's, to be a limit yeah. to. It's, it's limits of the and it's also sense. discretion and it's also about the reading of the situation. But so that's why the, but that's the point though then? because a penalty could have led to a goal for Bayern. So those are the biggest chances you no, have in... I, mean, uh, I, well, I may not necessarily agree with the decision and the thinking behind it. I'm just saying that if that was the thinking, the referee would not be obliged by the same sort of concept yeah. that because it is common sense. Since then, yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you want to extend the same logic, at some point, it will start looking foolish. Mm-hmm. Just like this one looked foolish. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no that's, that's, not the point. that's what they're saying. At the start that of the minute, it looks foolish. Just denied buying a legitimate opportunity yeah. to score a goal. No, not, the, no. Not, not the one that you described as So it's not, they don't think it's foolish. Okay, anyway. The, the so main issue so I have with the whole discretionary power is that you cannot tell when the referee will overdo it. Yeah, that's fair. But he just asked one of the no, best questions anybody has ever asked. It is a great asked. question. It's and I love the fact that the question fits into my thoughts that <laughs> it does it, show you. <laughs> it was damn stupid by the ref to scoop. Yeah. Whatever. Fair it's enough. stupid. Okay, guys. So we're back again. Look, I've seen all the comments. Keep them coming. Yeah, we love them. Uh, we we love absolutely them. love them. We appreciate them. Obviously, Gliding if we want to spend the whole time reading comments, <laughs> we won't be able to have an actual yeah. conversation. Especially Kuftown, we'll baby girl. Yeah. Yeah, Kuftown, baby. Kufri, they So anyway, 
bottom line. <clears throat> now, the Champions League fixtures are done. Uh, we know who has made it to the semi-finals. Real Madrid uh, beat Manchester City to qualification penalty shooter, dramatic circumstances. Um, Christopher Nimli is not here, but he and Sicho were the ones who leaned towards Real Madrid qualifying. I was more in favor of Man City qualifying. So was Daniel. It didn't quite happen. Arsenal didn't make it. Bayern Munich will now play Real Madrid in the semifinals as well. The other semifinal encounter will be between Borussia Dortmund, who did a number on Atletico Madrid, and then Paris Saint-Germain, who, well, <laughs> humiliated Barcelona uh, in Barcelona. Uh, the Barca coach, their fans, they're crying, man, 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 because they think the referee cheated them because you got a man sent off. Have you forgotten that in 2000, and 12, Chelsea went to Barcelona, had a man sent off, a goal down. John Terry, nonetheless, Capito. And Chelsea still ended up drawing that game 2-2 at the Camp Nou against Prime Messi. Oh, big shout to Ramirez. Ah, You had one man sent off, you lose 4-1, and you blame it all on the referee. Uh, winners, uh, winners, winners don't make excuses. Winners yes, just winners win. Don't no, shout. no, no, no. Winners just win. Like Chelsea, shout, 2012. Shout. John Terry was sent off. You've already said fact, You don't need to say it again. Hey, wait, wait. Said uh, it. Apart from that, there was also injury to Gary Cahill. So Chelsea's first choice center backs were sent off. Mm, one was sent off. They Fine. Knew, they knew one, one was sent off. One got <laughs> injured. All within minutes of each other. Yeah. yeah. And Chelsea were a goal down. And Messi missed the penalty. Hit the post. No, he missed a penalty. He did miss Very the penalty. Very crucial. Yes. Shocking. And and the match ended 2-2. Two -two. Chelsea qualified. Torres. You are playing at home. You have a man sent off and you lose 4-1. And blame the referee. But uh, uh, that's not what we want to dwell on. I don't want to make you feel too bad. Was it not 3-1? 4-4. 4-1. Yeah. Mbappe got a brace. Uh, brother. Mbappe uh, scored Osman twice. Dembele and... Uh, Who scored the other one? Sir? Who scored that one? They lost 4-1. It was... Well, it's, you don't need to guess. Four, yeah, ah. I'm going to Wednesday check the for you. scored the first goal. Mm -hmm. Then the so second goal, be, Vitinha, Vitinha, Vitinha scored Vitinha. the second Vitinha. goal. Drive. Vitinha. On the edge Great of the box. Yeah. Yes. Great strike. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. All right, Actually, anyway. the best goal of the day, but everybody forgets it. It was a fantastic goal. <laughs> it was, it was it a many goals. Yeah. It was, yeah. A, it, was a, it was a great goal. Uh, anyway, so we don't want to dwell too much on the Champions League. We did that a lot last week. So last week's episode was basically Champions League. We want to talk about something else this week. Uh, there are a few things to talk Wait, about. you don't want to talk about how the four teams are in the Champions League. No, in fact, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's start, about let's start from Bayern. Uh, let's start from so, Bayern. Like, okay, what do you want to say about Bayern? No, the, you see, <coughs> we all are viewers and listeners a responsibility. Absolutely. No, we previewed certain games. Yes, okay. and now we, we have set, to review. Yeah, we have to uh, review. I, I agree. So when you're also, what, so what when, went wrong oh, for Arsenal? Oh, for Arsenal, they lack Zuzu. <laughs> You're telling me that Arsenal lost to Bayern Munich in the Champions League because they don't have no, some see, spirit back in there. No, see, no, 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 it's not necessarily spiritus, but you see, or are two spiritus. Thank you. No, Charlie, <laughs> on a level, eh, me, I approach football very scientifically. Of course, that's why. Should. Yes, it's a physical sport. That's why when you remove Champions League and some teams, when some teams are not involved, we can cook it and tell you who is going to win. But That's true. Come. But when there are some, see, we learn, we learn, as we learn, as we grow, we learn. You understand? When there are some teams involved, when you were predicting, where was that? When there are some teams involved, you need to add a, a certain element of, of aura and understanding of the competition. And I didn't because, and you see, to be fair to me, Bayern have been very poor this season. To be fair, very, yes. very poor. To be fair. Bayern have aura in their league. They could, hiding him, hiding him in pool, two nil down, they were coming back against Bayern. Right. And tactically, when you looked at Bayern, look, there were so many spaces. Look at the previous round uh, when they faced Lazio. Yeah. Lazio don't usually create chances for fun. Maurizio Sarri's team. They are very disciplined. And even in terms of their, their uh, what's the word? They are willingness to attack. Yeah. They are very cautious. Extremely when they are patient. Very yeah. patient, very cautious. But against Bayern Munich, there were so many spaces in there and Lazio couldn't help but move forward. And it was almost like anytime they had their willingness to attack, there was an opening for them. So when you look at all those things, you, you, I think anybody will understand why I would say that Arsenal will go into this game and have a real chance. Even against Copenhagen. Hey. Against Copenhagen, yeah. Look, remember, I said when Arsenal beat Porto that they don't have Champions League pedigree. That I agreed. 
But I didn't think they'll go out against Bayern. Going all the way would be a stretch. But with how I thought the draw had been favorable to them by them getting Bayern Munich in this state at this time, I expected Arsenal to win. And when you look at it tactically, and we are talking about the second leg, in the first half, I'm surprised Arsenal didn't score a goal. Arsenal were brilliant in that first half. Tactically, you could see exactly what Mikel Arteta wanted to do. But I also have to quickly praise um, Thomas Tuchel for that, his team selection and the doubling up. The, the deployment, deployment of, of both uh, Masrawi and then um, Guerrero as a left winger. Almost doubling up on what Arsenal yeah. were doing on that right-hand side. And you could tell it was a clear response to what happened in the first leg. The overload of Havertz and Saka and Odegaard on that side, which created opportunities for us now. So he dealt with that. We, he, they struggled in the first half. But in the second half, when they came out, they were completely the dominant side. And for me, when you looked at the body Arsenal language... Arsenal looked lost in They looked lost. They, they were afraid. And, and for me, I'll say this thing again. I don't understand why Arsenal as a football club consistently, when it comes to moments where we all know they can do, we all know, do, like, they are supposed to be able to surmount these challenges. But some way, somehow, it's like they are afraid to fail. Nobody expects you to win. Like, so there's throw no, everything at it. Yeah. They are, look, there are certain teams, and I'll mention, like, Chelsea in their prime. When Chelsea are underdogs, they play without fear. Bro, they play with Chelsea, courage. Even that's Chelsea, when they thrive. Even Chelsea in these states, they, it, they were in the Carabao Cup and they took exactly. Liverpool all the way. Yeah. They drew with Man City in these states. City, they, yep. they won against Man United. There's no, just, they're there's just something, there's just yes. something Chelsea mentality are underdogs, they're fearless. Yeah. They're fearless. But, but and some the, of these things. The answer to your question is in two folds. One aspect of it is a cultural thing. Arsenal are too nice a football club. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's, that's actually that's, what I'm that's saying. That, they can't play not, any other... When the game demands them to show... A bit of grit. Grit. The grit. They can't find it. And you see, the these other things side is that there since... it is a requirement of the competition mm -hmm. that on, if you take away Pep's Barcelona, they are perhaps the exception. And maybe Pep's Man City, who won the competition last, those are perhaps the only two teams you could say at no point during the period when they were good where they required to dig deep, where they require to show something other than well, they just... Actually were. No, but they, 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 I'm no, just saying that... The basketball team was, something was other nasty, than, but people yeah, didn't really yeah, like yeah, yeah, Something the other than the no, footballing about, ability. The, the, my context is the, the Champions League. When yeah. you talk about those two teams, in the Champions League, they, they had to dig deep. And they showed it. Yeah. No, but, but I'm talking in terms of having to, say, grind out results the hard way, right? Suffer, go through difficult... Games where they come out and... The but City almost lost the Champions League final yeah. against Inter Milan. Games where they come out and the description is that these guys were warriors. They left yeah. everything. Arsenal don't have that in their DNA. Yeah, and it's... A, it's it, that's why I, I quickly need to clarify. It's yeah. not a... It's not a Mikel Arteta's group of players. No, no, no. no. It's, a, it's, it's been there. Even the 06 Champions League, fine. Yeah. Thank right? you. They yeah. had it in no, there. But, but the that, only that, that, was that, missing Cities. Yeah, you but, listen to... Okay, yeah. Before the record to, and even after. You listen to certain interviews. You look at... Back in the day, uh, Patrice Evra talking about the Man United approach when they were going to face Arsenal. He looks at these, they were kids. Like back in the day, when they were going to face the Arsenal team, they had men in there, uh, Patrick Vieira. The, the Arsenal he came to meet. Then he looks at this current group of players where he's talking about when he was on the, e the end of his uh, Man United career around the 2011, 2012. Said they were kids. Nobody was really afraid of Arsenal. Yeah. And it's sad because, again, there, there's no reason why there should be pressure or there should have been pressure on this Arsenal team. So I don't understand the switch off in the second. And, 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 in the, in the, in the and what you say is great. What because is saying, what is saying that if the they two played legs, with a bit more freedom, they could easily they have. Could no, I, I think, yeah, maybe yes. But over they the played two with legs, pressure that they shouldn't have. Yeah. The first 45 minutes in London, they were better. The second 45 minutes, they were better. The first 45 minutes in Munich, they were better. It was that second 45 minutes that, as Danny described, they froze even more. Mm -hmm. And Arsenal were not playing with the the conviction that otherwise they would have. Yeah. So obvious pass, somebody misplaces it. And that's why Declan Rice got a bit of stick by Arsenal fans because yeah. some of the passes that he was misplaced or some of the balls he was miscontrolling wasn't one of character we've seen of him this season. But credit to Bayern because what Bayern did then was to stop the game from being a nice game and go physical. Yeah. Yeah. So in that second half, even in the first half in Munich, Bayern sat deep. People don't people are complaining about Real Madrid, which you will get to but Bayern Munich were deep for a home side. And that first of Roma, uh, Arsenal were pinning them into their, into their half. And Manu Nia had a great game as well. But as soon as Bayern Munich made the game a physical contest, no, Arsenal, the 50-50 ball they were pulling out, they couldn't win them. 
when once it became a contest of running and chasing down the boy and somebody sliding it out, Arsenal started jumping out of tackles and all of that. And once they turned that game into a physical contest, Arsenal, Arsenal couldn't it. cope. <laughs> and, 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 and it's almost and as though it. in Arsenal's DNA, it is okay to lose so long as you lose nicely. You lose ah. playing good football. You lose being decent. And yeah, they need to be nasty be sometimes. Applauded. They need, yeah. They'll be yeah. applauded off the pitch. I mean, how sometimes when I think of it, I cannot accept the fact that Arsenal, for example, lost the cup final to Obafemi Martins and Birmingham City. Those things break you mentally. Yeah. When you go no, it shouldn't be happening. Yeah. Look, yeah. in the first half, tactically, one of the things that I picked out was that, and Tito mentioned how deep Bayern were. Harry Kane, who, for all intents and purposes, is very central to everything Bayern do in their build-up, had the fewest touches of all the outfield players. Mm. The only player he touched the ball more times than was David Raya. So, if the central cog in the team's build-up, and when Arsenal went to the, when Bayern went to the Emirates, we saw Harry Kane. He was the central and he, his combinations were, he was present in every single sequence that led to either a chance or a yeah. goal. Mm -hmm. that, so once they short-circuited him, you expected that that aspect of the job had been done. But again, you come to the fear factor and how they could not move through. So in the second half, if you look at Arsenal's first shots at goal and the second shot at goal, which happens to be the third and final, Arsenal had three shots at goal all 90 minutes. The distance or the distance between the time span. The time difference, yeah. 42 minutes. Between shots. Between shots. <laughs> in, the, in the second half. In the second half. So the rest of the time, what were they doing? Just passing for fun? Interesting. Yeah. So apart from, you know, and this is the, the interesting thing. Apart from um, uh, being knocked out of the Champions League, uh, obviously it came in a week where Arsenal also took a big hit in their Premier League title ambitions. And then that exit in the Champions League also means that Arsenal will not be participating in the maiden edition of the new expanded FIFA Club World Cup that will happen in the USA next year. So it's a that, double that, whammy. That one is a stretch. They had to win it. To they had to win. No, yeah, but so long as they stayed in it, there was a chance. Now there's no chance. You really and I'm think saying that's that that chance, you really think that's that right now, that chance is gone. Just as it's gone for okay, PSG will be there. So for Man City, no, by, no, by, by, so Man City will be there, Dave. No, Man City will be there as champions. PSG yeah. will be there by ranking. By ranking, Bayern yeah. would be there by ranking. By ranking. Atletico, Aya, Salzburg, all, all of them will be there by ranking. ranking. They don't yeah. need to win. Yeah. Arsenal have not been in Champions League for a long time. A long time. Yeah. 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 Okay. I don't think um, we're looking there. You know, yeah. Chelsea will be there as winners. Yeah, as winners, we know, we know. Yeah. You don't need to twenty twenty one. Real Madrid, Madrid has been there. Let's, let's move on move to on the from Chelsea. Chelsea. Let's, <laughs> let's move on to the Real Madrid. Oh, yeah. Congratulations to Bayern, though. Because it's not had a great season by the end of the Champions yeah. League. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, listen. Yes. Let's talk about but this. Guys, and look, this irks friends, me because... Before we move it on. The whole of this week... Before we move it on. Assuming, and this is a big if, uh -huh. Bayern win the Champions League. Does that change the dynamics in, in terms of Thomas Tuchel and the decision that the club has already said he would move on. No, he doesn't. No, he's going. No, he's... Because he then actually, it means that he actually... Should, actually, actually so the question answered that be, question uh, it, it, yeah. in the week yeah. where he was asked in post-game, the game, he said, if Bayern Munich win, are you going to stay? He said, no, he has agreement with the club to leave at the end yeah. of the yeah. season. So it actually then means that he leaves on a high. Yeah. So, which is actually... It's almost like saying that if Jürgen Klopp had won the quadruple with Liverpool, would he have still stayed on? The answer perhaps would uh, have stayed on. No, that's a different one. That is, I'm just saying that possible. <laughs> no, no, no. That is, you mentioned Liverpool's name, and now we want to talk about Liverpool. We will talk about that. What is happening league. to Liverpool? No, we'll, we'll get there. We'll, we'll that get there. Team, I don't know why they were so free. It's not possible. So they can't the do Liverpool it. fans. Who? No, they can't do this it. This thing X me. You can only dream it. By Real Madrid fans, really. how do you feel that all week after the hard work of progressing to the semi finals and for the pedigree that this club has, there was a certain narrative? That is, or that was propagated all week that Real Madrid were lucky to get into the semi-finals no, of the that Champions thing League. Is, huh. they were, they, are, they are actually Madrid fans who are also who are agreeing to, to yeah, it. Who are agreeing to it. That's Why? Like, because Madrid sat deep and defended. Why? Defending is not football. No, they feel like, and at least I, I, I spoke to a couple. They feel like because of the players they had, they should have been able to play the ball some. They don't have better players than Man City. They probably have. That, but that, that they, one no, is they arguable. don't. It's On the arguable. pitch. No, that one is arguable. It's okay, very no. arguable. Now, should we go player by player? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Okay, good. Apart from Haaland, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Man City player. You have the better goalkeeper. City. City. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. Are you sure Who? this is Nedesna's performed looting? 
Please, it doesn't matter. Pedigree. He mentioned it. That's okay. what it is. Okay. Okay. Like okay. Tangents, okay. Go on. Luni. Yes. Yeah. We've already won. Yeah, because natural pay pedigree is better no, than no. all. But even in current form, are you telling me yeah. that Looney has had a better season? Yes, he has better season than Edison. Edison is not a great shortstop. Okay, player. how many clean sheets do they have? Check. It's not. Because what about, is the metric for measuring sheets, a goal? No, no, no. Let, no. You, have to, you, have let, you, have to, you have to look at the goal prevention. Uh, um, Lunin has prevented more goals, and goal prevention is a measure of the what quality. Are, what of, are hold on, hold on, no, no, what, are, what are the numbers? No goal prevention. No, we, we can. No, no, we can no, do I heard you, but it's off the cuff. That's why, but we can dig that up. I'm saying that Lunin has prevented more goals than Edison. And Lunin, is that a fact? Yeah, it is a fact. You can look it up. Edison, when when he's being confronted with an XG which is high, the, the chance of a player scoring, he barely saves it, and everybody knows it. The difference, however, is he so, barely gets so, these balls so, coming so, to him. So wait, so. On current form, yeah. going into that game, yeah, Lunin was better. Yeah, Lunin was better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lunin has, Lunin has suddenly, he's not a big name okay. goalkeeper, so yeah. But if you're asking me who who is a better goalkeeper between the two, mm. per pedigree and history and everything, you, you let's say look. Edison. Let's look at the two centre backs on the day. Lunin from, has prevented four goals. Yeah, this, this season. season. Yeah, yeah. XG shots faced is yeah. sixteen. Shots con- uh, goals conceded eleven. Mm. So so he's prevented four. That's four. What's four. Edison? Then Edison will be higher. Because I'm, really? I would be so. I doubt was, Edison will be higher. I think it will be higher. I'm positive. I think Edison has ah, been played. It's the same. XG was well, same. Edison has played more games. Anyways, X, <laughs> XG oh, no. shots yeah. face is twenty five point five. Yes. Goals conceded is twenty six. Yes. What, what I re- what so, I know about City this season, Edison basically is basically expected. The what goals are supposed is, to go ahead. What, what I like so about Edison and City him. is, mm-hmm. yeah. What I know about City this season is. They don't concede many chances, but they concede quality chances. And most yeah. of okay, those quality end chances up in, do th- okay. end up in goals. So if we give it to Lunin, and then we go to centre back pairing, that they, they use played on Akanji, the day. Akanji and Diaz, Akanji and, and Diaz, and 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 Nacho. And Nacho. Now, if I pick Rudiger, who are you matching Rudiger up against? Are you going to match him against Akanji Diaz. or Diaz? Diaz. Diaz. I think they cancel each other out. I absolutely think they cancel each other out. Nacho and Akanji. I, I mean, know. maybe because I'm a Chelsea fan, but I definitely would pick Rudiger over Diaz any day. Uh, Diaz was one hell of a defender. No, he's, no, he's too, a good yeah. defender. Great, I'm not saying he's not. Yeah. I, I I'll just like Rudiger my defenders also, more yeah. like Rudiger. I want like, to defender like with an attitude. defend like that. Yeah. So, they put some fear in there. When you can pocket Haaland for 180 minutes, there you go. You get a lot of credits in the bank. It's not okay. it's Rudiger yeah. for me. That's Akanji, true. Nacho. Well, you mentioned pedigree for Edison. I would say Nacho, but Akanji. Okay. But to be fair, Akanji is a great center back. Nacho mm. never really disappoints, but yeah, I would pick I would pick Akanji. Vardiol against Mendy? That's tough. No, I think Vardiol. Vardiol is not even as a left, left back. back. He's, a, he's an experienced player. I'm picking Fela Mendy he's all day long. No, as a left back or as a... No, that's what he played. Back. He played left back. Oh, he's, uh, yeah. See, calm down. The left back Vardiol is playing, Mendy can play. And um, but the left back Ben is playing. You can play. But who's so a better the, left back? No. So the, what is a left back? Let's well, go with that. No, 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 it's a good question. No, it's not a conventional definition. It's a good it. question. Yeah, it's how, it's how but between team. the two players, though, over, okay. the, over the two games. What about okay. What about Walker and Kavahar? That one is very tough. Walker played just one of that time. But I played on the day as well. But I think Kavahar's output on the day was immense. No, you're talking about on the day or you're talking about the two players. No, I'm talking better. about the two players. No, who's we, better? Yeah, who's no, better? Daniel made a point. Yeah, I'm player for player, yeah. Player for player. I'm saying it's arguable. Who has the better players? Okay. Walker so Kavayal, in the midf- midf- midfield of it's, it's, Rodri, De Bruyne, yeah. and Phil Foden. Yeah. Don't go there. Don't go there. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Against a midfield of Kamavenga, yeah. Tony Cruz, yes. Valverde. Yeah. That that midfield, that that Real Madrid midfield for me looks more a lot so more, more a balanced balance. a balanced midfield than City's. But again, Danny says it, it's the instruction. Mm-hmm. But also individually, the Madrid midfielders. I think scored more points that's, than the City. Players. Yeah, City midfield were pedestrian. City. Left, right, left, right, left, they right. They were not able to influence the game no, in no, the no, match. No, no. Now, now we are taking it. No, 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 no. Before the match, yeah. before the two teams yeah. even played, Madrid's midfield for me is a more balanced midfield. Player who had the better players? That's the question. I'm saying it's arguable. And I'm, yeah. look, you let's just, let's just, let's just flow with the conversation. Go I on. was saying that Madrid fans, at least the one, I, I, I mentioned it, I said something. There are actually some Madrid fans who are also feeding into that narrative. And their reason is because they feel they had better players than Man City and they could have played... Or at least have enough quality yes, to match and up. And could have played a bit more offensively. That is their school of thought. I don't believe so because I think in as much as the system that they've been playing this season is not new to the manager, it is new to the team. 
they are, you may find it hard to accept it, but they are still adapting to that system. They are not perfect yet. Manchester City have been playing under this same manager. And the, in fact, Man City's core group of players have been together for quite a while. Yeah. So they are better used to each other. They are, they've gelled a bit more. They've been doing this for a much longer time. So you need to adapt to them, not they adapting to you. And this is a case where the last time you went to this stadium, they ripped you apart by four goals to nil. When for me, I think you had a better squad. You had, in fact, at the, at the front there, they were in a much better situation yes, with Benzema did. and Vinicius they had Junior. Benzema, that alone. They, yeah. So you need to look at the mistakes you made and try and perfect it going forward, using the, the, the players you have and trying to get the best out of them. And I think Madrid's game plan for me made sense. Now, the game plan was, they were different. And I'll look at it in two halves. In the first half, it was a very, it was much more offensive than the, than the second half. First half, yes, they were sitting, de defending very compact. But their breakaways were sharp. They were direct. And we could clearly tell that they were going for counter Especially in the first half, yeah. In that first half, when it came, Madrid create, created much better opportunities True. than Manchester City. I think if you check the metrics, Madrid had two big chances in that first half. They yeah. scored one, they missed one. Point is, in as much as City dominated the ball, Madrid were the better offensive side in that, in that first half. Yeah. Madrid were leading at the end of the first half. These games, look, it's fine margins. We all know that Man City will by all means create chances. They will. The point is, can you limit the volume of chances they create? That's what you are trying to and do. And the quality of the and chances. And the quality of the chances. And I think Madrid were able to at least limit the, the volume of chances. What they tried for to very do that, long for a very long spells, yeah. of course. And most of what? the saves Luni made were balls down the middle. Or yeah, they were not to make. They were not, yeah, they were not. Saves. You know, they were, you were not. You know, you know, where you like, wow. So I'm looking at that second half, and I'm trying to enter the head of uh, Carlo Ancelotti. What is the need trying to counter press and, and leaving yourself exposed? Because we saw it in the first half. Yeah. There were moments where Madrid tried to counter. And Man City could have taken advantage of them on the counter attack. Yeah. It was smart position, especially from Tony Cruz. And that's what a lot of people don't <laughs> really appreciate about his game. He's not your. And I'll mention another name. They are these, these two players here. Eh? Mm -hmm. They can finish a match and they are not dirty. Yes. But the defensive work that they've done. to be slight tackling. Thank you. Jorginho. Is one. And Cruz. Yes. Their positions, they, they manage to pick up positions where they have high volumes of interceptions. They defend space yeah. as well. Simple. They defend so space because well. of them, you will not make a certain pass. They can force you to go sideways by just positioning themselves in a way. All these things is football. It, it is. So it's not about throwing and yourself on the floor. It's critical of the ball incident. Very, very critical. So because of those certain situations, which I think was smart play by Tony Cruz, Man City were not able to totally take advantage. And also because the ball fell to the wrong person. All the time. So when City Almost transition is Akanji with the ball, so they rather make a poor pass and it will not punish Real Madrid. So in that second half, at half Is time, that also, again, is that also Real Madrid deliberately marking out or cover shadowing Kevin De Bruyne and Bernardo? And being comfortable... That's, yeah, that's being, exactly being, what he just said. Being comfortable yeah. to allow Akanji to have the ball because they know... Yeah. Technically, yeah. he's the and least that's technical credit player. to Man City yeah. and also a downside on Pep for putting Akanji in a position where he was in a position of influence yet couldn't influence the game offensively. Yeah. Now, at halftime, if you are Angelotti, you have shown in the first half that when you are sitting deep and you are blocked, Man, Man City are not creating chances. Mm -hmm. Man City's brightest scenarios in the first half came on the game in transitions. Almost nobody noticed that. So, if I'm Angelotti, I'm looking at this. Why should I continue to go on a counter and risk uh, 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 conceding an equalizer when I can just sit deep and maybe pick a moment or two? So that's what he did. Yeah. And to be honest, in as much as Man City had... You see, that's the thing about watching the game as a fan and watching the game as a neutral. As a neutral watching the game, and because I also want... I want a, I'm not a Man City fan through and through, but I want a Man City. It was more frustrating for me from a Man City point of view because City had the ball... But they were not creating we opportunities. Like, yes, they created, but they were not creating the opportunities. Bro, use the term, use the term. Noisy. Noisy possession. <laughs> <laughs> like they have the ball. <laughs> you can see it being moved around, but Madrid were not being faced by anything. Last 15 minutes, that changed. That was because of that substitution by Pep Guardi when he brought on Doku. And to be honest, that's even for about eight minutes. Was it like the, the first eight minutes that 
Look no, I'm out. saying, but it was it, it was quick. Yeah. There were yeah. a series of opportunities that City created. Yeah. The goal, the De Bruyne chance, and there was another one. I think no, so they had a really good room. Yeah, one that was hit coming from the one was hit on the back post and Haaland. The full miscued shots. Yes, all of those chances came around that time. And to be honest, you see, football is like chess. When one manager makes a move, it takes time for the other one to, to steady adjust, it yeah. and yeah. to adjust. By extra time, when, by the time we went to extra time, Real Madrid had adjusted. So when you look at the fine details of the match, don't look at possession. That one is, is, you see, it's a means to an end. You can have the ball, but it's about the efficiency. What are you doing with the ball? When you look at the, the details of the chances, Man City, yes, they created, but they created a similar volume of chances that Real Madrid created. Yeah. Both teams were equally as efficient. If the number says that in big chances, both teams created 3-3, three, three, yes. Yes. they scored one each, each and then they missed two, missed two. each as yeah. well. So. Yeah. so if you go down to those metrics, me sitting deep, you having pos- possession, it's just a stylistic thing. And I don't even it doesn't, understand. It doesn't show dominance. No. And I don't understand the whole frustration or the whole narrative because it's a cup competition. Yeah. What is critical is to get to the it's next to get the, And get the results. And for me, you see, I think this, this thing is more of... And, if, 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 if you follow, if not just this podcast, but if you follow, I'm very consistent on this, yeah. this, uh, 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 oh, oh, this fixation, false, or, fixation of, it's a false narrative, false narrative of possession football is being, what is, is what is entertaining. What, what are you talking about? Look, Look but, let me state emphatically. Mm-hmm. You watching the podcast, you listening to the podcast. That's what you may think. That you like. The passing possession. Passing is possession nice. air day. It's not nice, oh. It is the <laughs> results. <laughs> that matters. That that, look, in. results is the most entertaining thing about Do you football. remember Louis yes. Van Hals, Manchester United? Yes. Ah. Possession, sideways, sideways, sideways. Side side keep side the ball, nobody will get it. Then they will draw and people are angry. When they to the right. Because if it, look, look, no, the most let essential. Me, let me, what is the purpose of the possession? Let me even give you a prime example. Yes. This season, if you watch Brighton, they have still been as entertaining yeah. as last but season. But they're not yeah. winning. They are not winning. Who is getting stick for it? Yeah. It's not the same manager who was getting praise last season. Yes. When Jose the only difference is that they're not getting the results. When yeah. Jose Mourinho came to Man United his first season, was defending his life away. He won the Carabao, he won the Europa. Europa. They were praising him. He says he won the community show treble. Oh God, he can take that one. <laughs> <laughs> his second... Let me forgive him for the second season. Third season, he was doing similar. He wasn't winning. The same person who was being praised two years prior was being criticized. The style hadn't changed. The, the style hasn't had. changed. It's the results. Arteta, start of the season, we're giving him fans. Arsenal are still playing. In the last week, they're giving him stick because of results. Yes. It is the results, though. When Messi is doing his things, no. when he's giving Sulia in the things, no. It's not that Sulia you like, oh, yeah. It's the fact that at the end of the day, Messi will give you that assist. He'll give you that killer pass. He'll create that dangerous chance. He will score the goal. The, the dribble of... had a purpose. It has purpose. The possession has, has had purpose. And that, no. He will be like uh, Ben Affa. Yeah. Ben Affa. Ah, ben Affa, he can dribble <laughs> and dribble himself. He go 10-10 twist. The ten, bottom ten, line ten. is what you say. The bottom line it's is the to result. score. It's the, the result. Yeah. So the if, for example... Your 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 way of getting the result is to possess the ball. Good do it for well. You. Good, no, is, good for you. Yeah. If my way it, of getting the result well. is to defend, yeah. Yeah. for me. Yeah. For me. And in both it's, it's just it's okay. just it's just if you whole, say you know how to score. Yeah. Okay, score and let me see. No, it's, I, that, it's just it's just the whole exactly. narrative about it's just the whole narrative about teams that are able to keep the ball and most often when you want these teams who keep the ball well, they've gone on to win games. Mm-hmm. So it's become a false sense. That, that, is what that is what wins games. Yeah. It's not the keeping of the ball that won the game. It's the efficiency of what they did at the end, end of keeping of the ball yeah. that won the game. And when you watch Liverpool, Jagan Klopp's Liverpool, for me, in the last 10 years or so, no team has entertained me better than Jagan Klopp's Liverpool. That peak Jagan Klopp Liverpool with Mane, Salah, Firmino, Henderson, Fabinho, Wijnaldum, uh, Robertson, that, that team were not overly fixated on possession. No. But it is with the, the speed at which they attacked, the speed at which they defended. Efficient use the of fi- the ball. Yeah. The efficient use of the ball that was fascinating for me. And I just loved the way they played. It, did they always win trophies? No, it didn't. But was it beautiful for me to watch? Yes, it was. But did they achieve all results? No, it did not. Pep Guardiola City team with Sane, Raheem Sterling, Aguero. That team for me is Pep's best team that I've watched in the Premier League. 
They were amazing to watch. Why? Because they will still win playing some high octane football. When I watch this Man City team, at times they bore me. Yeah. At yeah. times, I'm this bored. Man City and, and that is why it reminds me of Spain 2012. Yeah, they will bore you. <laughs> and that is why at the Etihad, <laughs> after all the games they win and all the goals they score, it's yeah, still one of the. It's beat. it's still one of the. Uh, most, most underwhelming. I mean, the overwhelming atmospheres you find in the Premier League, yeah. and sometimes players and even the manager is calling for fans to show up and back the team. But again, when you come back to this game, you've got to give Calanchelo some credit. Yeah, huge, have, huge. I don't credit. think people give him enough credit. I asked this question in the last episode, right? Fence, like people, fence, don't, it is, people can't. It is a, appreciate what they don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. But, but but no, but you see, the point is, you can't tell me you don't know. Calo has won Champions Leagues. You know. Yeah. That in itself is credit. Listen, we are crediting Zidane for winning the Champions League three times, the three peats. Yeah. Carlo has won more Champions League than that. Mm-hmm. Right? He didn't just he do it in the Champions League than any, any manager other manager in the history of the It can't Champions be luck. League. It can't be accident. Now, Carlo is intelligent enough and not, you see, and that is one thing about young emerging managers who are arrogant and cast in stone in their style. A manager like Brighton's Roberto De Zerbi, I love watching his team play, but I wonder if he would be a title winning manager. Why? He's not a winner. Because he is so stubborn in the way he plays that he would not be pragmatic for any game. But Carlos intelligence and knows that at the end of the day, a game has to be won. Yes. How do you win the game? And when people question his tactical nuance, I'm like, now I'm like, are you guys crazy? Like, how, how have you seen a lot of football and not realize how brilliant this manager is? And I'll just take you back to 2005 when Liverpool beat them in the Champions League. When you watch Roma, they play and set up this, not only in the game against City, but the way they play this name, the way they set up. Listen, the, the box made food we praised Pep and Ateta and everybody for. Carlo did it. Way the, before it became fashionable. The, the, the diamond made food we praised so many coaches for. Carlo did it. The, the slides, the uh, inverted, uh, uh, overlapping and a shifting to a back three from a back four. Carlo did it. And when you go back to what that 2004 five season, Carlo had a back five, a back four of Maldini left back, Nesta Japstam centre back, and then Kafu at right back. Yes. If you watch that season, the only full back who was really overlapping unless a set piece was Kafu. That's yeah. true. And when Kafu overlapped, it became a back three. Yep. And of that, Maldini that, shifting Maldini into. Maldini comes yes. in and then and then Nesta, Nesta and, yes. and, because, and Kafu would always offer width. He offered the most width for them. And in fact, just an addition. And on at times when Serginho played. Serginho played. Yeah. Serginho and Kafu overlap. Thank you. Pelo, Pelo drops, drops and sits in. Now, and, he, and depending upon the game, he used either Serginho or Kafu. He played a midfield diamond. That is, it's not even similar. It's the same as what he's doing with Bayern Munich and uh, with Real Madrid. Right now. Pelo sat at the base of the diamond. He had Gattuso to the Register. right. Register. So Pelo played like Cruz who played for him yeah. in this diamond. Yes. He had Gattuso to the, to the right of the diamond. Destroyer. And that is where Valverde would play. He had this guy, uh, what's Seedorf. his name? Sidov to the left. That is where Kamavinga plays. And he had Kaka at the tip. That is where Bellingham is. He yes. plays Shevchenko and Crespo at the two top. That is what he does with Rodrigo and then Vinicius. The difference is Rodrigo and Vinicius are not out and out strikers. Yeah. Shiva and Crespo. So the outcome in that line work. But even that, He's found a way of convincing Vinny to leave the line and play more central. Do you know how difficult that is? Yeah. And at times, depending upon the game and the opponent, Gattuso moved from the right channel to come and sit alongside yeah. Pelu. And then Clarence Sidoff and Kaka will be at the top. What makes for this? It's not a box. Uh, actually, Today you see boxing, you're telling me Pep is a genius. Yeah. Meanwhile, Carlo did this. Actually, and, and the people that say that Carlo Ancelotti is not noted for creating or any, uh, for example, uh, uh, Tactical, what's, no, whatever. No, what's the phrase? Being I'm innovative, re- being innovative, or even even fashioning a trend, a tactical yeah. trend. He was the first to start deploying the more creative midfield that deeper and the Bro. destroyer further forward. Bro. So you notice that his real DM was Gattuso, but he wasn't the deepest. Yes, yeah. He started. So he was the one who started that. Yeah. That, uh, the, that defense. The, so the, defense. The name register. register. Let me even yeah. tell yes. you. Let me even exactly. tell you. So that's what. Uh, yeah. What's his name? Ranieri used to win yeah. the league with, with Fenster. Fence. Because with N'Golo Kante was the actual DM, but he wasn't Drink the Water deepest. Was Drinkwater Drink was the deepest one. Let me even tell you something. We watch RB Leipzig and we watch some teams play 4 2 2 2. Kalo with that AC Milan yeah, team yeah. was playing the four at the back. Pelo and Gattuso, Seed of Kaka, Crespo Shevchenko, or Thomasin. 
Four two two two. Yes. He, in in the league, he, oh, he was playing. You see, and that is why so it's Jim annoying. His flowers. See, look, you don't see, win the like, Champions League. In the league. game, actually, before you come in, in the game, in the game itself, if people want to criticize a coach, it is Pep Guardiola. Yeah. Because you had so much of the ball, yet you could do nothing with it, and it wasn't only because of the way Madrid defended. It is only because City were so predictable and they didn't even have a way of changing. And Pepe, there was no outlet. He wasn't bold enough in this game because for so long in the game, for so long in the game, his best player in this season, he played him in a position where he was ineffective. Phil Foden. He played Phil Foden on the line on the right, almost as a decoy. And for so long. Look, in the Mendy, second half, Mendy had probably like the most comfortable night. Yeah, no stress. he wasn't troubled at no all. No stress. Listen, That's because Phil Foden will never stay wide. He will, he, and he can't even take him on. He doesn't have the, 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 the pace. He can dribble him, but Mendy will recover he in will time recover, because yeah. he doesn't have the best. Just like Phil Foden and, and, and Cavallao happened. And for me, from the 68th minute or 67th minute or so, when Bernardo went wide and Foden came into the midfield, that spell going into when Doku came, City were on a different level because why? Their best player, the manager was now bold to bring him into the middle. Then he made a change and brought in Doku. It is not my fault that you signed Jeremy Doku. It is not my fault that this season, all your wide players, including Vadio, when he steps forward, is not doing great. Walker couldn't step forward until Vinicius got out of the game because yeah. he was there for Vinicius. Mm-hmm. So he was deep, so he couldn't join. When Doku came on, as we've seen this season, Doku is the most inconsistent winger. So he played only eight minutes and after that, he didn't, he, he, didn't affect, he didn't affect the game again. <laughs> you, if Doku was consistent and he played well even through the extra 20 minutes of 30 minutes of extra time, C- Madrid would have been in trouble. But he vanished as soon as he came and gave that assist. And he's coming the better miss the sitter. Uh, he scored one. And then during the game, when he had the chances, as Danny mentioned, the ball fell to Akanji, who played in a space where John Stones has shown us that he's by far better in, at that job. Dan Akanji, was he injured? I don't know. He was on, on the bench three rounds, came in in, in, in sure, extra yeah. time. But the credit goes to Ancelotti. To be able to tell these players, Vinicius, Bellingham, Rodrigo, Cruz, Valverde, Camavinga, that guys, defend. Defend the midfield, send them wide. And they obeyed and listened to the instruction. That for me is credit to Ancelotti to picking the right tactic to get into the Champion League semis and for Pep to keep the possession and go home and fight for the Premier that's League. True. And you know, and for the people that think that defending is easy, hmm. Hmm, defending is easy. In the 210 minutes of football that happened between Man City and Real Madrid, Real Madrid held the lead for 160 minutes each time after they have scored. Hmm. Man City took the lead. They only held on to the lead for 18 minutes. Mm, over they, the two the City, so so the defending is not easy like that. Look, if, if you're a good defensive team, mm. show it. Because defending is football too. And clearly, over the two legs, yeah. remember, they have shown that they can score by scoring four. Yeah, They have shown that they can defend mm. by keeping the lead for as long as they did against Man City. Because clearly, if Man City had scored earlier, especially in that second leg, if they had equalized earlier, we could have been speaking about a t- totally different Charlie, game altogether. Cup, cup games are different. Are different. You, know, so you can't take the, the mind of a league game, game into a cup that game. That stubborn style. Absolutely you not. Fail. You, Actually, I know you are itching to talk about. I want to talk about the crybabies. I'm sorry. But Ooh. what are Barca fans and their coach crying about? <laughs> they got one red card that was a legitimate red card. Then their coach started kicking bottles. They also got sent off and they lost 4 1. It wasn't bottles, he was kicking. And yeah, the fourth official, yeah. he, yes. he, he risked the life of the fourth Where official. When the foul was placed in second round, he was kicking. Charlie, have you seen the video like kick, of him? Just like kicking the table. Charlie, have you seen a video of him lifting his wife? <laughs> you didn't Jab- see a video of him dancing and lifting his wife within this week? But ba- ba- and Kasadi overdid it. Ah, you've won the first leg, you've done the whole movie. Uh, Basa show- pre- uh, the ah. movie. Actually, but, but what, 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 no, what's going on with that? No, to be honest, you don't have money. So it's Javi's those, these small, small things. What you Wait, Javi, the he's leaving at the end. He won the league. He was overrated. Nothing. Oh, how? Huh? How? He won the league. Again. <laughs> and, and I will circle back to what I wanted to say that you didn't allow me to say. People just don't know enough about these things. So they can't appreciate what they do. When don't it's know. poor and when it's no. great. In that Real Madrid game that we, uh, we loved, we're all talking about. 
People love to see a DM who makes that slight tackle, who makes the contact, who whacks players down. Someone who can interpret space and anticipate what is going to happen. And so he moves five yards, 10 yards to the right or closer to the next center back or further away from the opponent just to ensure that he narrows down the space right between himself and the nearest attacker. And in the process, eliminates that player from the list of options that the player in possession has. So that if you see him, but you won't pass the ball because you know that that space has been blocked. Yeah. Or shows you to go wide. People don't appreciate that. They want someone who would actually Be wait, sliding into tackles. let the pass come and then risk giving away a foul. So when someone up is able to interpret that space and makes that decision and, and cut it out. And because of his movement, the player in possession is forced to choose a different option. A lot of people cannot interpret that. They may see all right that, oh, the Brenner had the ball, but he didn't pass the He didn't pass to what looked like an obvious pass. They cannot understand why the Brenner did not make that pass. So if a coach sets his team up such that that game state, that sequence happens eight, six times in a game, and they repeatedly are able to force a player onto his, for example, his weaker foot. They cannot make sense of it. If they cannot make sense of it, they cannot give the coach the credit. So what you're saying basically is that too many of the football fans are we on the ball enough. watchers. We and don't know enough. Of let's, the ball. let's pipe mm. down mm. In, in all of these. Okay, fair enough. The yeah. Javi situation, he's overrated. How so? Barca's worst defender. Mm? Barca's worst defender on the night, was taxed to mark PSG's biggest threat out wide of the two wingers. And that is unconscionable. It, it is not done. It is, look, earlier today I was saying that coaching in and its simplest, best defender being Arojo. No, I said their West, worst West defender. Their worst Cancelo. defender. Cancelo. 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 Mm. And then he was allowed Wait, to where's mark... Wait, where's Baldi? Is he injured? Injured, yes. Injured. He, was allowed to injured. Mark, he was allowed to mark Osman Dembele. You don't do that. Especially after... So what, what, what would you have rather... So you either push him forward and hook Robert Lewandowski, introduce a more natural defender who's good in 1v1 situations. Who would that like be? Who? The who, came, who came on off the bench? After Inigo what? Martinez. Yes. Inigo Martinez, if you take him wide, he's dead. Do so hook him. The issue, the issue for me is in twofold. Put a more natural defender there who in 1v1 situations or whose natural instincts will respond to those situations adequately. And then also, you create a scenario where you get one of your midfielders or one of the white players to actually be the one to engage Osman Dembele, like we saw Angelotti do in that Real Madrid game. That is just one way of thinking about it. You are under no compulsion to go with that idea. What you have to do is to provide a solution. And no, he but did you see, not. you are, and you so are, repeatedly. No, when you when you make that point, mm -hmm. you are assuming the two teams set up sim similarly. No, they 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 didn't need no, to set up for role. him to respond. I to. don't know why Rafinha though was playing there so he could track back more. To it the, wasn't to working. Help. And here's the thing, Bakula, who was playing on the opposite, yeah, he was on the on the had on the so much left. joy. Yeah, and I was wondering at what point is he going to respond to this because for for PSG the tactic was clear and they weren't going to rush it because they had realized that. This is working. They were stretching Barcelona at will. There were times they would send him one cross. It will elude everyone. And the player at the other end of the ball will be PSG's opposite winger. To be, fair, that to be fair, though, didn't that become too easy for PSG after, after the, the red? But that was the responsibility. But were, PSG was not, were PSG not, still not the better team before the red? Even, before, Even though Barca got no, into the lead. Fence, I thought PSG fence. started... Yeah, but Barca, 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 Barca got the lead, yes. but PSG were, were the what, better what, team. What, and what did we just say I about... Mean, Games is the bad no, no, no. scoring. I think, no, 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 no. I think Barca had contained them fine. Not necessarily. I, but they had scored. Not necessarily. necessarily. I, I thought no, 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 hold on, hold on. No, no, up no, until this is, this is these are the facts. So let me tell you up what I Up until saw. the red card, Barcelona had a two goal advantage. I'm talking about one from the first leg, one from first, the night. You're focusing on the score. I'm talking about the, the score real game. Is the most important no, metric. I'm talking about the real game scenarios. I'm talking about what he did not respond. Which influenced the other goals that came. That is not the result. That is the real game scenarios that he. I'm saying that Bas at that point, even before the red card, the score was, was what it was because you were seeing Bakola getting in behind the defenders. He was sending a cross, it will be overhit, or he was sending a pass. There will be no one 
at the end of that. It does not mean Barca were dealing adequately with the problem. Dealing with that would ensure that you cut out the supplies from the left side. You cut out those combinations that were leading to the chance because everything PSG, PSG were doing before that red card and before the goal was what they continued. They did not change the tactics. But I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. If he stayed 11 v 11 yeah. and PSG continued doing that... They would that, have beaten them. They would how, have. How do you tell me that the opponent is getting sights on goal? They are getting in behind your defense. They are finding the combinations that are creating good, decent openings, even if not necessarily goal Didn't scoring Didn't PSG chances. get similar joy in the first leg and still didn't yeah, end up winning? Yeah, but you're counting on an opponent being wasteful, which is a horrible tactic. The whole point of it, every good defensive plan is that it minimizes the chances, the quality of chances, and the volume of quality chances the opponent is going but to create. But I think create. if it was 11 v 11, maybe but it was a struggle, so- because I think... Lamine Yamal was giving Look, Nuno Mendes a lot of people uh, horrible I actually time. don't Defense. agree that 11 v 11. 11 v 11, I, yeah. I'm thinking even from Barca the first were leg, that poor. Even I, from I, the first leg that Barca I just have concerns about how poor they became Friends. after they after had a man sent off because even it's from the first leg, Even from the first leg that Barca won, after PSG scored their second goal, they had two chances in four minutes. There was a first one that they flopped. There was a second, the Bakula counter on the right side that he, he could not decide whether to cross or to shoot and eventually missed it. If those chances go in, that's 3-2. That's a different conversation. They miss it and then two minutes later, Barca score from the free kick. Another mistake. So if it is we're going to be result-centered in our analysis to say that, oh, then let's look at the quality of the chances. Because on the balance of play and the quality of the chances that we saw in the game, PSG should win the two legs. Yeah. With or without the red card. And that is why for me, the, the better argument will be to look at the management of the real game scenarios, right? Because what PSG did, I thought that to a certain degree, they even shot themselves in the foot by where they deployed Kylian Mbappe, who was their best player, because he was practically ineffective. But at the red card. But even was... with that, still, they created the better chances. So you're, you cannot tell me that your game plan was the better on the day. And yet, the opponents had the better sight on goal, had the better chances. But you were counting on the fact that before the red card, they were not really ruthless. So your assumption is that it is going to continue until no, the end but it's not. No, but I don't think card, that is the only assumption. Yeah. The, it takes two to tango. Uh-huh. PSG were not clinical with their chances. Yes. Barca were. Uh-huh. So to be fair to Barcelona, they got a chance. They scored. Mm-hmm. PSG get. They don't score. That's not Barca's problem. No, Barca, that's not. Yeah, exactly. But why did Barca they- had one job? Yeah. Both teams actually had one job: score. When you get your chances, yeah. Barca did their job. I'm saying yes, to you, you didn't. I'm saying so to you, you that. can't take credit away from Barcelona. No, I'm saying to you that and say friends, because PSG were friends, wasteful, I'm so saying, you can't credit I'm Barca. I'm saying to you that there is that, but there were scenarios that I felt they could have responded to. You would have had a better chance if, and you see, for all of the time that Lewandowski stayed on the pitch, he was ineffective. That's why I'm saying that you would have had a better chance if you push Cancelo. If you need him for any role on the pitch, it should be attacking. Because when the demands of the game changed to a point where you were required to defend more. You needed players who can actually do that. I so don't good. think it will make sense in any tactical context to assign Cancelo to Mark Dembele. Look, even on Dembele's no, worst he, day... What, eh? let, no, just, just, just let me finish let, here before you... Even on Dembele's worst day, when he's not scoring or being productive, he will skin Cancelo for 90 minutes. Maybe what he does after skinning him is so, what will so be So that was poor deployment of personal. Deployment. Okay, fair. No, the reason why I don't necessarily agree is, you see... There are some there are some teams who have certain personnel and they know these things will cancel each other out. Yeah. So you look at the PSG fullbacks in Hakimi and Mendes. In that first half, Lamin Yama was doing basically the similar thing Dembele was doing to Cancelo. Yeah. Some of these things in coaching, you allow it to happen. It's, it's, it's plus one minus one. And you, you go with the hope that your attacker gets the better of the opposition. Again, some attacking fullbacks like Mendes, like Cancelo, even deploying them there also sort of gives the winger more defensive uh, responsibility just by their presence. So Dembele will not be as free to hug the touchline. Yeah, I didn't really think, apart from the penalty that Cancelo gave, he didn't away, do I didn't much. think 
I don't think Dembele really he had a better yeah, chance. Yeah, he that. didn't. It was just that 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 silly decision for Cancelo to go down when he had If any of the wingers actually had a good game, it was Bakula. Bakula. Yeah, it was Kunde. And you see, that's that's the reason why I want to circle back to your point. I don't necessarily if. Is that penalty thing that I feel you are you are picking on on Cancelo? Yeah, because Kunde is a more natural defender. Yeah, Kunde is a much better defender yeah. than Cancelo. Yes, but Kunde got skinned. Yeah, and I don't hear Bakola, people talking yeah, about Bakola it. Bakola did a great job. Dembele on didn't really like he, he didn't really. Yeah, I think about the yeah. penalty. I think yeah, in Dembele terms of one on one the, isolation, thing, yeah. getting past, okay. he had a good game, but it wasn't Can- as a result or at the expense of 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 Cancelo. It was that penalty incident where yeah. they were. Can I ask a game, question? Can no, I ask this question? Okay, before you, my problem with Xavi though, before the question though, is that when Bassa had the red card, he still tried to play like they were 11 v 11. That was terrible. That's no, my biggest problem. Should have, it should have been humble enough to sit tight because I can't get why 10 v 11 PSG could send that ball across the face of goal with the space they had been in behind the line. They should have been deeper and tighter and compact. Frustrate PSG, hold them till the break or something. And when PSG now are becoming desperate, you can send off your wingers to maybe try and hit them on the counter. They were too expansive for a team that had a man down for me. The question I was going to ask is, Xavi says that officiating was a disaster. He's been a crybaby. Charlie, 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 Charlie. Charlie. He's see, been a crybaby. See, Xavi has been on the see. pitch. In, in Xavi's career, he's probably witnessed more refereeing injustices that have gone his, his way than any other player in the modern I, I, era. Look, I'm here for Remember it. Let's list them. Remember of Rebel? Of course. Uh, uh, of... Tom Hennen of Rebel. Fence. Stamford Bridge, 2009. Wolfgang Stank. Massimo Busaka. We haven't forgotten the names. No, but Fence. The, let's talk the about Robert, the, 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 what's his name? No, see, if incident. you go on that tangent here, you, see, you are trying to create the narrative that the referee was unfair. The referee was, was great. No, I'm, just, I'm yeah. just saying that he is used to co- controversial decisions going which are actually way. wrong. Yeah. Going his way to the extent that when he actually sees the correct one, he He's cannot identify. Yeah. No offense. For, 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 for the base of those who are watching or listening, yes. we have to take the incidents one by one. The simple matter is simple. The Arau incident, it was the lack of... You see, Arau's angle to the run he made was bad for a defender as good as he is. I think he trusted too much in his own ability and his yeah. physicality that I will get there. I mean, it's, it's me. I'll get there. Because Bakola's touch took the ball across him. It did. And if his run was straight and not almost diagonal and trying to meets Bakula, he probably gets to the ball too or match him shoulder to shoulder. But in trying to meet Bakula, Bakula got ahead of, ahead of him, him and he had his hand over his shoulder and pulled him right before he got into the box. Yeah, the red card is right to play the rule because Bakula was bearing down goal last and one. you bring him down, you are the last man. So you are denying him a clear goal scoring opportunity and you pulled him down. However, the funny side is if he got into the box and he pulled him down in the box, that is a penalty in the yellow card because of the new rule yeah. that says that there can't be a double pen- uh, punishment. It's for called a double jeopardy. jeopardy, jeopardy yes. Yeah. So you, you can't give a, a, a penalty, penalty and, a red, and a red card. So it'll be a penalty and then the yellow card. But once it's outside the box, it's a straight red because you've denied them a clear goal scoring opportunity, uh, which, which is which a penalty would have been clearer than. So the referee was brilliant. And for Xavi, you are kicking the UEFA branding that is guiding the VAR zone. Boga, you don't respect. No, it's not about the kicking. The fourth official was there. Was standing there. His sins were exposed. Exposed. He was you risking his life. Injured. Yes. He injured. So, he, he, ended his career. He, like Javi, he, Javi, should know better and then take care of those emotions. I don't think the referee had a bad game. I think the referee was fair. If that was La Liga, he probably gets away with it. But in the Champions League, at the highest level, no, you see, referees now are even being, within the same team. Yeah. They can't all agree that the referee was bad. But and you know that God, because okay. Gundogan came out, yeah. yeah, and he said it was his team. He, he did. I, I thought, said the right thing. Gundogan, I'm, 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 sure, I'm not sure if he was the right thing Guys, to say. Gundogan, though, I love his candor. However, Araujo's response makes me wonder if he should have been the bigger man in leaving out some of the very harsh criticisms. Yeah, right. So you can give your assessment of the game. You can give that tactical breakdown and accept responsibility. But the part where you talk about the mistakes other players, and I thought you went into too much detail. It was unnecessary. To basically yeah. explain. And it's not the first time. I remember the classical the classic, that they, cool. he was talking about yes. when he went to the dressing room, they were in their phones. He doesn't feel that they're angry enough. He came no, here to no, go. No, I think but it's, it's very necessary. No, 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 no for me, no, I 100% agree with Gavi. Gavi and Cole said, listen, we're all, we're all crying. We're devastated. 
What do you mean by we're on our phones? But the point is, this is a new generation. This yeah. is a new generation. No, no, and and okay, you can but, say these things no, in the but, dressing room to the boys. That boys, the, Man City have a lot of vocal players. When you watch their documentary that has been released, well, it's the documentary, it could be acting. But Ruben Diaz. Yeah, they were blasting him. Ruben Diaz. Or uh, he could be acting. Yeah, uh, Rodri. These are Actually, guys watching who, that documentary, I felt like Rodri was the real captain. Yeah. 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 Yo, he walks into the dressing vocal. room and he's vocal about standards. Standards. It is not what you say in the media that changing the standards in the dressing room. It is what the team agrees to speak about. So it's a culture. It, it's a culture. No, no, so no, when like you step he, out and you throw your place and your own colleagues under the bus. No, when you, put it, when you put it like this, I don't like it. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, the reason why I agree is, you see, sometimes for and clubs like this and where, ba- where Barcelona is going with this, they don't have money. So now they are relying on their youth yeah. uh, products. Look, I'm of this, I have this school of thought. It's not, factus, if you were a player coming through the ranks of a, a, an academy of a, a top team, part of the football training is also understanding the club you play for. Yeah. Yeah. You can't come from La Masia and be acting you are playing Candy Crush on your phone after you've lost to Real Madrid. No. That one, if I'm Gundogan and I see it, I'll call you out, not just in the dressing room, but in public also. So Barcelona fans will know. Well, that not kill the, that this, the, the kids. No, no, no. no. If, if it kills, kills, if it kills they, you, they, 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 are they, are they are not meant to be the club. No, that's not true. No, no, no. It's true. No, I, get what, I, get what what I get what you're saying, though. I get what he's saying. There's a better way to do it. If you can't handle it, then you are not meant to be. No, so you expect a 17 year old boy to straight away understand. Everything overnight. Okay, no, this no, time. No, okay, no, let me see, let me why, let me why let, why me, let, me, let me quick, let me quickly context. explain this. No, no. Let me quickly explain this thing to you. Boga, unfortunately for Barcelona, unfortunately for Kobi Menu in my United, <laughs> Gavi, Pedri, Kobi Menu, they are not in the same situation that players like Rooney, Ronaldo were in when they entered the first team. Now the team is depending on you to be At consistent yes. week in, week out. Like Enzo Dems and Mudrik. You ca- yes, you are 18, but you are now a man. So unfortunately for you, if I see some certain attitudes in, we have to flush it out. Danny, 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 we can't allow you to go to normal. If on this podcast, as, as teammates, right, we are all aiming for this, give our, our, our listeners and viewers great content. Mm-hmm. But there are things that maybe I'm not doing right, that you can easily walk in and before we start, all the pre-meetings we have before you start. They can chip in that guy. Situ, what about watching that and watching that? that, that? Thanks. What about doing that? And instead of you telling me in a team meeting so that we get on the same page, the next thing I see is they are on Twitter tweeting about again, on Twitter or, or again on, on we media don't tweeting know. And about. You see, the reason no, no, I'm no, saying we is don't that know look, if you didn't talk about I'm giving it, Gundogan. Listen, no, I'm giving the Gundogan benefit no, on. on the doubt because after, no, after the classical. Gundogan. This is not the first time Gundogan has been a leader in a dressing room. Yes, we know that Gundogan is a very good leader. So for it to come out. It means he's probably been saying it. Oh, um, there are small points. They don't listen. And, and, don't listen. Even so that, he has also, to come and tune them and to the fans. And even in that interview, so that change. the suggestion was that Javi didn't have a problem with that reaction. And given his background... What, as, was that a suggestion? Yeah. Because if you read the full text and everything, it was as though... Uh, this You're happened talking about in front a, a of... Classical comments. Classical. Yeah. This happened in front of Javi. And he didn't have a problem. If you look at the training that Gunugan has had... If you look at the training Javi has had, it is right for Gunungan to expect that you understand the ethos of Barcelona probably more than anyone here. You are supposed to set the standards. So when me, the foreigner, I, I was taking in, all of that to the media solution. Cristiano Ronaldo no, complained not, he's about. He's not taking it to the media. Uh, he's taking it to the fans. No, but Barcelona fans. Are you a Barcelona fan? 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 Are you Bellingham will never tell us. He's playing for Real yes. Madrid. Bellingham won't, won't throw Because he will not play Candy bus. Crush after losing. Uh, anyway, guys. We don't so know that because he's not said it. That's our no, review of the Champions League. We know because it hasn't happened. They will continue the argument even Crash. after this podcast. Just make sure you like, subscribe, share. I saw Pedri. Oh. He was playing Candy <laughs> Crush <laughs> on his phone. Instead of going to the... the uh, 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 guys, thank you. Masu. Thank you very much. <laughs> like, subscribe. Uh. Put the notification bell on so when we upload new episodes, you'll be the first to see it. Uh, we appreciate all of the comments. If you have any feedback, 
your thoughts on anything we've said today, leave them in the comments uh, on this podcast. So we'll be back again with another episode next time. Until then, cheers and take care.